So one of the bigger challenges that I find a lot of students have when it comes to Upwork is not necessarily writing you-focused proposals, but not fully understanding the client's job post. You focus proposals and persuasive tactics and techniques and all of these psychological tricks and you know all that magic and mumbo jumbo. It all works. It works very well, but it only works when you come from the right context. It only works when you're coming from the right place. It only works when you understand the client's needs and when you've properly assessed their job post. So I wanted to get into some of that today. Look at some of the client's job posts and just show you the stuff that I'm looking for and hopefully this will help you kind of extract the data kind of get a feel for what you should be looking for within their job description so that's the main thing we're going to look at is job descriptions and how to read a client's job post hey minions if you're new to the channel and you like what I have to say then be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you never miss a video only do this if you like what I have to say and if you want to hear more about freelancing, entrepreneurship, and personal world domination. Alright, so I've got a client's job post up here. And this job post is for a webinar email sequence copywriter. So let's start right there. Let's start with the title. Webinar email sequence copywriter tells you exactly what they need, exactly what they're looking for. They're really clear about it. And one of the first things I do when I'm looking at a job post is I try to figure out are they clear about their needs? Does their title say anything that would give me a hint that this client isn't clear, that they don't communicate well? You know, I mean, the main thing that I'm trying to do when I start is rule out clients. Can I filter this client out? Should I move on? Or should I spend time reading their job post? So the fact that they've got a clean and clear title is good. That tells me that they might be an okay client. I also look over here on the sidebar. I'm looking for a couple of things. One, do they have any reviews? Have they worked with anyone? It doesn't matter if they haven't worked with anyone. I'll still work with clients who have no experience, but it tells me about how I need to work with them. Clients who are new to the platform often have different expectations with regard to freelancers. They often need their hand held a little bit. They have high expectations sometimes. They have high requirements. And for instance, you might see a client who says you have to be from Columbus, Ohio in the United States to work with them. That's not actually true. Even though they might have it listed as a requirement in their job post, um, it's not listed here, it doesn't look like. But if they had listed it as a requirement, I would just ignore that requirement and I would explain that I'm not from Columbus, but here's the reasons why that's not a problem. So you have to overcome that limiting belief if they were a new client. Going down, you can see that they've got four jobs posted, 75% higher rate and three open jobs. They have spent $400 with an average of four, uh, $42 an hour. So this client has some experience. They just don't have very many reviews. They're not brand new to the platform, or if they are brand new, they've at least paid some freelancers, and they've paid them pretty well. Going back over to the job post, you can see that they have expert level written here. They're looking for $30 to $66 an hour. This client probably has some money. Have you created multiple email sequences for webinars? So they're looking for someone with experience is what that question tells you. Have you created multiple email sequences? And they're going to ask you about this later on, most likely. Based on that question, They, when you get on a phone call with them or when you get to the interview phase, they're going to ask you for an example of when you've done that. So what, what client have you done it for or in what way have you done that? Okay, now we can go up to their job description. We can see that I am looking for an expert copywriter that specializes in webinar email sequences. What do we know from this line? What can we learn here? Well, they started with the words I, I am, which tells you this is an individual. You are working directly with the creator of the business. This is probably not a huge business. It's probably an individual who is running some kind of guru program, some kind of coaching business, maybe courses, but they're operating by their self. They don't probably have a huge team working with them yet so they might have some money they may have sold some high ticket courses but they don't have a huge team because otherwise their virtual assistant or some other person would be posting this and they would say we are looking for we work with entrepreneurs that use webinars to sell courses so that's interesting um, now they're trying to make it seem like they're a team which is curious to me we work with entrepreneurs it also makes a statement that they are already working with entrepreneurs and based on the rates they may be so maybe it's a small team and sometimes when it's a small team you'll still work directly with the owner 
but they'll mention that they are a team, that there's multiple people. I am looking for someone to help me develop templates based on our automated email flow so that I can plug and play these templates with future clients. So this line here is going to tell you that they keep saying our, our animated flow. So obviously they've got at least one other person they're working with, but I still think it's a small team. So keep all of that in mind. Also notice a couple things to notice here. They say webinar email sequence copywriter. None of this is very creative. I haven't seen anything, any kind of creative words in here. So some of you write really creative proposals. Sometimes you spend a lot of time customizing, personalizing. Personalization is a good thing, but too much creativity when a client isn't a creative client, that's going to be a problem and that's going to turn them off to you. So you want to kind of mimic their style. Notice there are two paragraphs in length and they're not saying creative words. They're looking for a different sense of professionalism. I am struggling with direction on how these sequences should go. Okay, this is a really important line right here. This is their core problem. They don't have a good sense of how the sequences should go. What that tells you is what they're struggling with is trying to put the emails in place. Which email should be number one? Should that be a story email? Should that be a sales email? Should that be a hi, how are you email? They don't know. And if you can bring that to them, if you can say, hey, I can help you put these things in order so that they make sense for your people, then that's going to help you stand out because other freelancers are just going to say, I've built email sequences before and I'm qualified, so hire me. But you're going to say, I've helped clients with several email sequences and I've helped my clients figure out the order that they go in and put things, put the pieces in place so it forms the full puzzle picture. You know, you can say something like that or you can give other kinds of description. Just don't go off the wall with stories. Just drop a little hint that you've done this before. You understand their problem, which is what you're saying here. And if I were writing this proposal, I would probably open it with, you need help putting your email sequences in the proper places to move customers or to move prospects from the awareness stage through to the buying stage or something like that. The goal is to create urgency, scarcity, and social proof with each email. So this is a good opportunity to ask this client a question. They already said they don't know the where the sequences should go. They don't know the order that the sequences should go in. So my question to them would be, do you really need urgency, scarcity, and social proof with every email? Has that worked for you in the past? Have you already tested this? So these are questions I would have as a professional that I'm asking them. They're targeted questions around that thing. Maybe they think they need that, but maybe that's not exactly what they need. And if you're going to hire me to put the pieces in order, I may not want to do an urgency, scarcity, social proof email with every email because I know from experience that that's not going to sell people just because it's there. Just because you have those psychological techniques does not mean you're going to make sales. Eventually leading them to purchase a course masterclass coaching program. All right, so you see, I told you before that this client was probably dealing in some kind of courses and coaching, and that proved true here. Those are things that I'm looking for from this one that tell me that this is probably going to be an okay client to work with. And if you really want to please them, you'll probably just give them what they want. You'll advise them on which order you think things should go in. But then you'll try to add a little bit of these things, urgency, scarcity, and social proof into each email. So even if those aren't the main focus of the email, you'll want to add those things in. And then when you deliver the work, you would want to point those, point out where you added that in the email. Because this client, you're going to be working directly with the owner here, and they're going to want to know where you've added those things in. So if you point it out up front, then they won't question you about it later on, and you will have already addressed that issue. Going through this email, I can, or this job post, I can scroll down. I see that whoever they worked with or are currently worked with that job, that client or that freelancer did not leave any feedback here. So we don't know their name for this type of post, I would just say, hey there, hi there. I would open with a hey there, hi there statement. And I wouldn't worry too much about the fact that you don't have their name. What I would focus on is keeping the link similar, writing in a professional voice, sharing the names of a few clients that you've worked with, and then describing how you've built webinars and webinar email sequences 
and put them in the right order. Those are going to be things to focus on here. All right, let's look at another one. Let's see if we can find something else that looks like it might be worth our time. Digital marketing specialist needed for tech company. Let's look at that one. So from this job post, analyzing this job post, I would know that we're looking for a digital marketing specialist for a tech company. First thing I want to find out is what does that mean? Because they put brand strategy up here as the category. So what does that actually mean? Are they looking for help with branding? Are they looking for help with copywriting? What is it? And I can go down here and see, hello, we are a tech company in the B2B cell phone space based out of Northern Virginia. We're in need of a digital marketer with experience in the areas of graphic design, social media, and copywriting content creation. So basically, they're looking for someone with a range of experience. For me, this probably isn't going to be a job post I would apply to. I'm not interested in doing all of those things. But based on the fact that they've asked for multiple things, you can usually expect that this is going to be an hourly job where they want to pay you hourly for, for you to do several things. If you're looking for hourly work, that's kind of what you want to look for. You want to look for clients who want you to be around for several things because if you want to create consistent hourly income then you need to know that there's enough work there for you to to work and have ongoing pay if you look over here on the right you can see they've got good reviews so that's good they have spent twenty thousand with an average of forty four dollars an hour that's also good so you know that you don't need to price yourself at the bottom you don't need to price yourself at $30 an hour just to get this gig. You can price anywhere between these two numbers and it's going to be okay and the client's going to consider you. If you price below this, you're probably going to underprice yourself and the client may not value you as much so they may not take you seriously and they may just ignore your proposal. They're looking for an expert and they know the experts come with a price so this client looks like a good one. Especially based on their feedback, I would probably go down so I see the location is Virginia. That's something I think I mentioned earlier. If they've got Virginia as the location, it is what it is. Maybe they're looking for someone in Virginia, but unless they specifically say a reason why they need someone from Virginia up here in the job post, then I would totally ignore it. I would ignore it from the side of, you know, saying that I'm not going to apply to this just because they need someone for, from Virginia. I would address it and say, here are the reasons why I can still work with you and why I can still help with you. Experience with startups and launching a brand is a plus. Please save the ability to please have the ability to provide examples of your work in the way of a digital portfolio and or writing samples upon request. If you have portfolio samples in your portfolio, which you should, then that'll be enough for this. And you can mention that you can provide writing samples if they would like those as well. They did not mention anything about Virginia. They said that they are a B2B cell phone space based out of Northern Virginia, but they didn't say that they actually need someone or that they have to have someone from Virginia. So they put that in the requirements here, probably because they would like someone who can come in and work with them in their tech space. I noticed they did say that they were um, a startup. They're probably a startup and they're launching a brand. So they may not have launched yet. They may have investor funding backing them, which is why they're talking about launching a brand. They haven't done this. They're still working on that. And that is why they're at the level of needing a digital marketing specialist. Also notice down here under the brand strategy skills, they want storytelling and branding. So since they picked those as, as key points, you'll probably want to keep your proposal short but you may want to use storytelling within your proposal to describe your experience. So tell a story about a similar client you've helped. Tell a story about your digital marketing experience. Tell a story about how you perform graphic design, social media, and copywriting, and what kind of results that got. Just tell, it doesn't have to be like, you're not telling Harry Potter here. You're just telling a simple story about an experience you've had with a client or with several clients. You know, and that's going to help stand out to these people. Also, one thing I would do here is a headline. So digital marketing specialist for tech company. You could just put that as your headline. A very simple, straightforward. It would be when you send your proposal, it's going to be a line at the top. It's going to be before the hello. It's going to say digital marketing specialist for tech companies. That's what you would put. Or digital marketing specialist for hire. 
tech company digital marketer for hire. Any of those would be good headlines that you could use to attract this client's attention. Let's scroll on down. They've got a little bit of feedback down here. So we can see this is what they left for the freelancer. Always a pleasure to work with Alexander. So Alexander is the person's name. Well, actually, let me back up on that. So I look for their name down here to see if I can find out who I'm dealing with because I like to address them in the title or in my intro line if possible. I like to say, hey, Alexander, but we just have to go down and make sure that that's who we're working with. So I tell people to look in the feedback and the reviews to find out who you're working with. But sometimes you're working with multiple people. There could be multiple people who are named down here. So what I usually like to do is find an example of a name, then scroll down and see if I can find where that name was used again and again. It looks like this guy's been working with the same freelancer multiple times, but we can see Alexander was used here and it was used down here with a different freelancer. What that tells us is that most likely this person is Alexander, right? So when you write your proposal, it's, hey, Alexander, or hi, Alexander. Don't shorten the name to Alex, because if you do that, you might offend them. Um, my name is Alexander, and I go by Lex. I don't go by Alex, and I don't really appreciate it when people call me Alex, because they don't know me well enough to call me by that nickname. And if they did know me well enough, they would know that I don't go by that. So it's a risk to shorten someone's name to a nickname, call them by their full name, and say, hi, Alexander, hey, Alexander, put an exclamation mark or just put a comment, it doesn't really matter. Then tell a story in your proposal because they've said they want storytelling skills. Describe branding. Uh, whenever you have a portfolio, I've described this in my Upwork profile course, but you sh your portfolio should be consistent. It should have images in each piece. Even if it's a writing piece, there should be an image in that portfolio piece. And the images you use across your portfolio should be consistent. They should look similar. That's how you pull a brand together. So I will show you an example here real quick from my profile. I'll pop it up on the screen so you can see it, that the images are consistent. They're very similar in style. They don't have to be the same. They don't have to be from the same uh, image grouping, but they just have to be of a similar style. So that means similar colors, similar themes, and that's going to help show a client that you are consistent, that you understand a little bit about branding. Um, mission statements, brand positioning. So most of what they need is branding. They actually need a branding specialist over a digital marketer, it sounds like. But having some digital marketing skills is going to be valuable for them. So going back to the headline for this one, if I wrote a headline for this one, I might actually write tech company branding specialist with digital marketing skills. Now I'm targeting the exact thing that they actually need. And I'm saying that I have the skills they need too. So that could be a good headline to open this one with. Um, you would want to mention that you are familiar with working tech company, working with tech companies, familiar with how startups operate. If you're not familiar with how startups operate, you should get familiar. Uh, you should ask them what phase that they are in. What phase is your startup in? Do you have investor funding? Like, who are you working with? How big is your company? These are some targeted questions that might be worth asking to show them that you understand a little bit about this space. So sometimes questions can be useful in your proposal just to show that you actually know a little bit about this space, that you're not completely unfamiliar with it. And sometimes that can be the key ingredient that sets you apart from all the other freelancers where everyone else is saying, yeah, I'm qualified. I can do this job. You're saying, I have insider knowledge of what's going on here. So for that reason, I can at the very least take your needs and add a little bit of clarity to those and approach it from this perspective of a startup company. And also notice that they're B2B cell phone space. So you might want to mention any B2B clients that you've worked with. And that's probably about it for this one. You know, just keep it short use the stories, use a good headline, and you're going to attract this client by showing that you've worked with previous startups and showing how you meet their expectations. All right, I hope this has helped you guys out a little bit. Maybe, I guess we could look at one more. I don't want to go too long with this video because it'll get super long if we look at a million different job posts, but I do kind of want to look at one more. So... Let's go to the next page and see what they've got. 
freelance writers for virtual newsroom. That's a weird one. International Education Institution branding and design opportunity. 24-hour proposal turnaround. Not really interested in that. That's weird. Board game final copy. Let's look at that one. Super short. Wow. Board game final copy. That doesn't really tell me a whole lot. I don't know if they need copywriting, but down here it says they need copywriting, so I guess that is what they need. I have three of seven board games I need in a final draft with a certain type of paper. This person is a... Ter they're terrible at spelling and grammar, so... That's something in, that's a huge problem for them right off the bat. Less than 24 inch paper as a roll or simple kneading templates for the board game surface. My name is BJ. Get back with me as soon as possible. All right, so check it out. I would not apply to this gig. I wouldn't apply because they don't have verified payment method. They're new to the platform. They are looking for entry level. They've got a thousand dollar price tag on here, but even so, they don't appear to be a competent uh, client to me. And they've got all kinds of different stuff that they need down here. They want landing pages, product descriptions, editing and proofreading, and uh, Adobe, and like what even is all of this? They've sent seven invites, six of those were unanswered because the people that they invited didn't feel that this client was competent enough to even, to even respond to. So for that reason, I would not apply to this one. I don't like it when clients don't have you know, when they have a huge amount of spelling errors, that tells me they don't pay very close attention to detail. And they say how you do one thing is how you do everything. So when you get a client who doesn't pay careful attention to things like their spelling and grammar, it tells you that they may not care that much. They may not be, like their business may not be that big of a deal to them. And they may be more loose and casual with how things work. And they may, this is probably going to be a client that's going to disappear on you, to be honest. They'll probably disappear and you'll never hear from again. And it'll be more frustrating for you and more trouble than it's worth. Looking for an amazing copywriter. They put amazing in big words. I don't know what amazing means for them, but hey. This client, again, probably wouldn't work with them. They're from the United States and they've got good reviews. They've spent $4,000, but look at their average hourly rate, $3.13 average hourly rate. So they're not paying very much. They've got a $150 fixed price tag on this. We are looking for a copywriter to write copy to engage the reader. Some of the copy you would be working with will be for our about, about us page, canned responses, emails for client proposals, etc., product descriptions. This is a long-term position to work with our agency. Well, if it's a long-term position, why did they list it as a $150 fixed price gig? That's kind of strange to me. It looks like people enjoy working with them. If you are someone who doesn't need a whole lot of money or just wants some like one-off gigs here and there that are going to give you a, a, I don't know if the price will be fair or not, but you know maybe this could be for you. I probably wouldn't apply to this one, but you can see from what they're needing, they want you to engage the reader. They haven't really defined how you're going to engage the reader. Some of the copy you would be working with will be for our About Us page. So they want definitely want web pages, canned responses, probably for like chat bots and then emails for client proposals product descriptions it's just a lot of different stuff they're an agency i've had good experiences working with agencies in the past but i probably wouldn't work with this one just for the sole reason that they have 313 an hour average hourly paid that price is maybe going to be too low before i would consider this client i would scroll down here and i would look at what they've paid other people so they they worked with this guy they paid him a hundred dollars 3D product render designer paid $40. It looks like it's probably a small agency, if anything. Um, not only that, they don't pay a whole lot. They paid $450 out to this person, so it might be worth talking with them. They've got 15 to 20 people they're already talking to, but for me, this wouldn't be, I wouldn't be interested in this just because the average hourly rate is so low that it tells me they are happy to pay low rates for some people. Man, I was hoping we would get like one more really good one to review. Let's see if there's at least one more good job post in here. Anything like something exciting. Let's click on this one, see what it's got. They need a copywriter, that's pretty clear. We need a great copywriter to deliver enticing content for a commercial real estate development website. 
The ideal person understands how to sell a lifestyle and can create vivid descriptions from a set of property highlights. All right, so we know it's in the real estate industry, so you would want to address that probably in your headline, real estate copywriter, real estate copywriter for hire, uh, commercial real estate copywriter for hire. These are just simple headlines that you can use for quickly putting a headline that can grab attention. I would actually start with real estate, the, the word real estate. So real estate copywriter for hire, if you were to go with this, because real estate is what they're looking for or commercial real estate, especially that'll jump off the page to them. The ideal person understands how to sell a lifestyle. So it's how to sell. You should understand how to sell in a lifestyle. How to sell a lifestyle is usually done through stories. It's this is kind of a word that indicates a more upscale client, a more uh, luxurious company. And when you're selling a lifestyle and you're doing that from from property highlights, they're talking about descriptions of not just saying how bright this room is or how how nice this room looks with these big windows, with these floor to ceiling windows. They're looking for someone who can take them on a journey. They want a journey. They want a story writer. So you're kind of getting into some, you want to be metaphorical, you want to use good storytelling. Like if you were trying to write a Harry Potter book, like this would be the time where you'd want to take some basic bullet points and turn those into a little bit of a story, a very short story. That's what they're looking for. Um, they've spent 90,000 total down here and they have pretty good reviews overall. So that tells me that one, this client is experienced with Upwork and working with freelancers. Two, they've spent a lot of money. They're a big luxurious client, like I said, Three, they're looking for experts over here. And four, they've paid an average of $60.93 average hourly rate. So you can get paid well from this client even on hourly. And anywhere between $28 and $60 is going to be all right. So main things here, whenever you go to write this comm your headline, real, commercial real estate copywriter, you could also try other headlines, something more creative creative storytelling copywriter or vivid description copywriter or lifestyle copywriter. Any of those would be good headlines too, because those are things they specifically asked for. Now, while they said how to sell a lifestyle, and I did highlight the word how to sell, the fact is they don't want a direct response style here, or at least they don't want a spammy direct response style. They want something that is more of a branded feel. They want storytelling, engaging storytelling. So keep your proposal fairly short but also highlight some examples of other clients you've worked with and how you told stories for them and use that story to tell this story about how you can help this client. Down here they say, do you have immediate availability to help with this project? Well, you should probably have that. If you don't, they're probably not going to be interested in working with you. They're looking for SEO writing, copywriting, creative writing, and content writing. You could mention this point here, SEO writing. How important is SEO writing to you? Are you trying to attract customers who are from the local area or is it more important to you to attract customers online? What is their end goal? So these are some questions I would have for working with real estate and what approach do you guys use? Do you have a website that I could see to help me understand what your business is all about or how you how you take your customer approach? Those are just some questions that might help. They've sent two invites, they're interviewing one person, so that doesn't mean you shouldn't apply. It just means that they've tried to find some people that might be a fit for this and they've sent those. Now, one person did not respond, one person did, but even though they're interviewing one person, that doesn't mean that there's no chance for you to get hired. They allowed people to apply to this job post, so there's always a chance. And if you use UFocus, if you use a good headline to attract their attention, if you show a little bit of storytelling and you keep your, your proposal clean, focused on them, and share some of your storytelling abilities rather than just telling them how experienced you are, then you have a chance to get a response. Going down here, we can look at their feedback, of course, see if we can find a name. It was great to work with Valerie. So this client is a female, and it looks like we'll probably find more of that if we go down here. I don't see anywhere where the name was used again. There it is, okay. Valerie was extremely helpful. So now we know we're dealing with Valerie. Whenever we write this, we'll write our opening with hi, Valerie, hey, Valerie, some variation of that. You can be a little bit creative in your proposal, but don't go off the wall with creativity because this client is both 
look, they're looking for a sense of creativity, but it's luxury. It's affluent clients, affluent customers. And to that end, they don't need you to be the most creative person on the planet. They need you to be creative enough to tell a story, a visual story of what they're trying to sell. So you do want to show some creativity and address their needs, but don't go off the wall with it. That's the main things that I would be looking for with this headline, semi-creative proposal that uses storytelling to explain how I can help, and then ask maybe a targeted question of them and keep it very short because that's how they wrote it. This looks like a good client to work with. Use their name. And that should be enough to get you a response. Anyway, those are just some of the things that I'm looking for. I think we've got a half hour on this video, so it's kind of a long one. And it's that's probably enough to help you out today. That's as much help as I can give you today. Hopefully you found this helpful. Let me know in a comment down below if you have any questions about anything I've been looking for here and I will answer those as quickly as possible. Or if you have any other thoughts on things that you might look for, I'm always happy to engage with you and I really do enjoy it. So it's cool when you guys comment, I appreciate it. Other than that, yeah, we will, uh, we've got some big things coming up pretty soon that you'll wanna stick around for. If you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to subscribe because and click the notification bell so you get those notifications. But that's all I've got for now. Thanks so much for watching, I'm Lex DeVille. I'll see you next time.